This news update is brought to you by... Say hello to Carol. Carol talks for a living from morning till night. So she relies on Flo's crystal clear home phone service brought to her through Flo's 100% fiber to the home network. It keeps her in the know. And because she bundles her mobile broadband and TV services, she enjoys huge savings. So she can enjoy much more for much less. So visit any Flo retail outlet, call 1-800-804-2994 or visit discoverflow.co to find out more. One of a kind connection. This is how we flow. It's Friday, April the 15th, 2016, and this is your Barbados Today Morning News Update. I'm Emmanuel Joseph. Thanks for joining us. In our top story, the mother of the student who is accused of kicking a female teacher in her vagina and spitting on her Wednesday has chosen to remain mum on the reported violent attack which has so far led to her daughter's suspension from the government-run Ellerslie Secondary School. Relatives who had contacted her on behalf of Barbados Today also said they were in the dark over the alleged incident. However, police confirmed that a report had been made and that the minor had been brought into the Black Rock Police Station for questioning by an adult yesterday. Up to last night, no one had been charged in connection with the incident, even as police continue their investigations. However, speaking to reporters following a three-hour meeting with the school principal and other teachers at the Black Rock Institution, both the president of the Barbados Union of Teachers, Pedro Shepard, and the head of the Barbados Secondary Teachers Union, Mary Redmond, were adamant that violence against teachers must not be condoned and they will be recommending expulsion of the student. I think that this is an area that both unions are in agreement with. The principal understands and accepts and is demonstrating a commitment to zero tolerance to violence against teachers in this school. And it is a united effort on all fronts to make sure that this is dealt with quickly it is dealt with effectively and it sends a message not only to the students here but to the students throughout the country and the wider society that this type of violence against teachers will not be tolerated. Violence in schools generally is something that we have to rid ourselves of in this small society and within the course of the next few days the BUT and the BSTU will be working together towards a program that will bring some sort of national recognition to the problem and to steps that we intend to take to address them. Meanwhile, Minister of Education Ronald Jones has joined the debate over Wednesday's violent incident at the Ellerslie Secondary School, warning you can't just expel the student involved in the altercation. Jones made it clear he will not be drawn into taking sides and cautioned against a rush to judgment. In other news now, government's multi-million dollar cane industry restructuring project has ground to a dramatic halt, at least for the time being. The High Court yesterday ordered the Frontier Stewart administration to shut down its $250 million Andrews project in St. Joseph with immediate effect. At the end of a 25-minute hearing yesterday afternoon, Madam Justice Pamela Beckles upheld an application brought by Andrews Great House owner Emil Peter Elias for an interim injunction to stop any further work at the Andrews factory site or the development of any lands related to the venture. Attorney General Adriel Brathwaite has been named as the second respondent with the Chief Town Planner Mark Cummins as the first. The court also granted a second interim injunction prohibiting Prime Minister Francis Stewart in his capacity as Minister responsible for Town Planning and Chief Town Planner Mark Cummings from granting permission for any related work to be undertaken at or around the site. Both injunctions will remain in place until April 27th when the parties are due to return to court for further consideration of this case. Ibrahim Lackey, attorney for Elias, tells Barbados Today that when the case resumes, he plans to seek the court's permission to turn up the heat on the Andrews project, which his client claims could pose an environmental danger to his health and a nearby property. So basically, the town planner and the attorney general would be restrained from issuing permissions and continuing works until the 27th of April. Then we're going to come back and try to get further injunctions and or renew these and naturally don't want to defend it. 
Police are appealing to Barbadians to come forward with any evidence to back up reports in circulation of a syndicate of criminals operating under the guise of sales promoters. Police spokesman Acting Assistant Superintendent David Welch tells Barbados today, while he is aware that the reports are turning up on emails, the police force has no evidence that undercover criminals were going around offering free key holders, which in fact are actual tracking devices that could lead them to people's homes or their parked vehicles. We have no evidence that that is occurring in Barbados. Mm. That's why I'm interesting. And they will continue to say to that if anyone has been victim of such, they should come to the police reporting on it. In sports now, several of the players from the West Indies Women World T20 champion team continue to reap the benefits of their recent historic victory. Stephanie Taylor, the 24-year-old captain, and Deandra Dutton are among the overseas signings who will play in the England's inaugural Women's Cricket Super League this summer. Taylor will be part of the Western Storm squad, while Dutton will play for the Lancaster Thunder. The six-team competition runs from July 30th to August the 14th. There's regional and international news after this short break. The 50th anniversary of Independent Secretariat and the National Cultural Foundation proudly present the theatrical production from Bassa to Barrow and beyond. We are not slaves. Saturday, April 16th at 6.30 p.m. at the historic Golden Grove Plantation. Come. Be a witness to history. I, Nanny Quick. Enter the ritual. Feel the power. This country will be independent. And if I have to wake up all the sleeping angels in heaven, so be it. From Bossa to Barrow and beyond. April 16th. Tickets $50 adults, $10 youth and children. Available at all NCF outlets and at TicketPal.com. Turning on to news from the region, there are conflicting statements coming from government ministers in Trinidad and Tobago about a $1 million compensation to members of the protective services killed in the line of duty. At yesterday afternoon's post-cabinet media briefing, Labour Minister Jennifer Baptiste Primus said the $1 million compensation was limited to families of slain police officers. Her comments were endorsed by Minister of Communications Maxi Cuffey. Later, however, National Security Minister Edmund Dillon said otherwise. In a press release issued yesterday evening, Dillon said government will honour the $1 million compensation package proposed by the previous administration to families of all members of the services slain in the line of duty. And that's the Trinidad and Tobago Defence Force, Trinidad and Tobago Police Service, Trinidad and Tobago Prison Service and the Trinidad and Tobago Fire Service. And on the international scene, at least nine people have died and more than 250 injured after a powerful earthquake hit southern Japan, toppling buildings and cutting power supplies. Officials say more people could be trapped under collapsed buildings. Thousands fled their homes and many people spent the night in the open in the town of Makishi. And this is the scene in the NHK newsroom in Kumamoto. At the time of the jolt, desktop computers began shaking and books fell from shelves. 
You're seeing footage that was taken when the quake struck. Once again, a magnitude 6.4 earthquake struck the southwestern Japanese prefecture of Kumamoto. The jolt registered the maximum seven on the Japanese seismic. That's news and sports. However, you can join us again this afternoon for more. Until then, remember to log on to www.barbadostoday.bb, subscribe to our e-paper, email updates, or like us on Facebook. You can also catch us on Izumi Media and Bus Terminals or Screenplay at supermarkets and gas stations near you. Also, tune into Channel 99 on Flow TV and to Mix 96.9 FM to get all the latest news and sports. I'm Emmanuel Joseph. Have a fantastic day.